F this nine to five, it's not me. Kick down doors and go chase your dreams. Even if it's not in the plan, do the best that you can, then you'll reap the worth of your seeds. Any is one of the few artists that has a message that genuinely needs to be spread. Ah, pink black girl. <laughs> <laughs> She's so confident in herself and what she does. <laughs> She's finally getting the recognition she deserves. Everything good, guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The rest is history, literally. How are you making music this good, but no one's here for it? That's almost stop doing blah 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 and I think at that point I realised I wasn't with my money because like, calm, oh, a nice stable check was coming in and I'm not happy. Like even working the nine to five just stopped me from doing a lot of the creative stuff that I was doing prior. Like, I just didn't have the energy for it. And so just like moments between going to work and coming back for work and like Saturday mornings were spent just like, writing lyrics because those were the only times I could. That one day I looked around at everyone at the office and it's just like people that are much older than me. And I just thought, nah, this cannot be it like forever. It's kind of new. I need to do this or I'm going to be 60 in this same chair, processing people's payments. That kind of felt like the, I'm quitting my job to do music thing. In his love, and us became new. Now, me not Shout out Louis, my old boss at Represent, Big Ups, because he put me onto Annie's music. She had come in to do an interview at Represent, and he was sitting in the show, and they played a couple unreleased tracks. And he told me, Pass, you got to listen to this girl. like. She's levels kind of thing. And I was like, OK, cool. So I listened to a track. He, he played me He's Not Into You. And pff, I was like, who is this? How have I been sleeping on this artist? Like, this is my favourite UK artist. I've just discovered my favourite artist. And I'm like, how have I not known? Like, how is this guy showing me my favourite artist? I went on my phone straight away, like, any looking up. I find this any Integrity app. And I'm like, is that her? Because I click on it and there's, like, 300 followers. And I'm like... And I scroll and I see, nah, it's her. Like, there's a little freestyle of her doing the rap and everything. And how are you making music this good, but no one's here for it? And so I remember just reaching out on Insta, just a DM being like, hey, we're going to support your music I represent. It's so sick. Keep doing what you're doing. And then just at the bottom, on a cheeky little one, I just slid in a few beats. I was like, P.S., I'm a producer. I'd love to, you know what I mean? I'm a fan. I'd love to kind of work with you. And she replied. Thankfully. So I'm just chilling, living life, and I've got this DM from this producer. He said that he'd heard he's not into you at like Represent and he thinks I'm sick and he's a producer and he like sent a link of a SoundCloud link. And I was listening and I think I like was like 15 seconds in. I was like, yeah, this is sick. I'm gonna, I was like, yeah, sure, let's hook up a session. I invited around for a session and she was like, yeah, I'll come through. Obviously I've got the studios in my yard in my bedroom, so it's always quiet. Like jokes when you have like a random person you never met before and they're just here chilling in your in your house, you know what I mean? There's photos of Mumsy and me when I was a you and all of that. This is me, innit? This is what I'm what I'm doing. I just started playing beats just to show her what I was like up to. And she was playing me her stuff. She played me a few versions of the tracks on the EP that she just had like parts of the songs or just the verse or just the lyrics. And I think, yeah, we were both just massive fans of each other's work, which is is quite rare, I think, that both the producer and the artist are both like gassed. You know what I mean? I was gassed and she was gassed. I remember we had a session and it was the three of us. So it was myself, her and Pascal. The vibe between the two of them was already, it was already immaculate. So that I think for um, an artist is already important to have that kind of producer who is, he sees what you are before maybe you even see it. Or he, he has like, a plan for you, or he, he knows where you're going. I remember just like sitting down and thinking, this guy is cold, like these beats are, this is exactly what I've been looking for. And so I was like gassed. 
person I wanted to leave because, <laughs> <laughs> because I, I just don't like being in places too long. So I was like, yeah, this is cool. Like we should hook up a session properly going forward. When I first started working, then she was still working, isn't it, at the bank. Like I told him, yeah, I'm quitting my job to do music, and he just seemed like kind of gassed about it. Hearing that from an artist was really interesting. I think obviously, whenever you take risks like that in life to kind of put all your effort into something that isn't certain, it's always like I think inspiring for the people around you. Just take a risk, and we'll see what happens. Like I'm giving myself this period of time. So I remember on the the 18th of July, 2019 was my last day of work and it was just like a load had been lifted. Like I didn't know what was coming and I think that was kind of beautiful. I'd rather like risk and be upset that I failed than not try and not, not failed at all and just feel the hurt of not doing it in the first place. Leaving was a domino and then from there it just... I got to talk. I got to tell what I feel. I got to talk about my life as I see it. See how a girl from just around the way Southeast London, educated, baby, born and raised. I kicked some shit, you wish you did your hate yourself. The first time I met Eni was at the Route 73 studio and Pass had uh, organised a session and I was just telling Eni all about the studio and the journey and the project and ideas and all this stuff. And I just remember thinking there was something special. It was a weird feeling, innit, knowing that there was something special. And I think that was probably also from how Pascal was speaking about it and how sort of inspired he was at the time. So I kind of felt some kind of energy and like, I was, uh, I was excited. I was excited the first time. We were working on the vocals for I Want and I'd, my friend had come down for Kent and she's a singer too. And she laid some vocals. And then this is the first time I, I met Asha and he was just really nice and just told me what Route 73 was about. Route is like a community project that aims to elevate grassroots music and also to operate in a bit of a different way to how the music industry tends to work. So we often work with like a service exchange model instead of just like money going back and forth. And the whole thing is about creating a community of artists that have a common goal share a common belief, but also want to do things at the highest level. First met Pascal at a party and he was asking me about Root and what the, what the deal was and I invited him through to the studio and we got chatting. And I could tell that he was mad serious and just mad on it. And he was saying things like, oh, I just want to meet that one artist. I just want to like, I want to do bits in this thing. Do you know what I mean? I remember him saying that and I was like, all right, cool. This is the energy that I need. And when I saw like Gold Link and Kate Trinada and all these like little tag teams of artists kind of rising up with a producer, I was like, oh, like, I want that. Like, I'd be so sick. Like, I want to rise up with an artist, like a rapper or a singer. And it was just, it was just like this dream thing. Obviously, I think with music it's so hard because you have to find someone that you're like kind of on a similar trajectory with for a little bit of time. Because obviously everyone's journey like crisscrosses and goes in different ways. But I just really want to find a rapper or a singer or someone that I can proper get stuck into, like into a project with, work on lots of music, bring through to root and just put a lot of energy and effort into kind of creating something special with them. I gave Pass a key to the studio and he was running sessions there. And before you knew it, he came to me, he was like, hey, Ash, I think I found the artist, you know. <laughs> I think I found the artist and he played me the music and, and it was any. Yeah, I think with, with the whole thing with Root, like it was sick because what we were doing here was like what it was, but we needed a space to kind of go to and like make the actual records, you know what I mean? Like, I feel like what we had when we could go to the studio and stuff was just another level. It was just sick that at that same time, I now had a studio space at Route 73. I now had a producer and there was, there was music to be made and someone was willing to back a dream that I had and back my talents. And there was just like a community of people that I'd met. And it was just like something I'd never seen before. So it was just like, I mean, and I remember always saying like, I just wanted to be around other artists. Some I remember leaving work with like gifts, my bag, and heading to like 
my first session with Joe Baird and Casper Miles, who are like 19 and 20. And he was kind of just sat in the corner and we didn't really know what was going on. Like we started writing, we started writing the chords. Um, and Annie was kind of like, yeah, 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 it sounds good, sounds good. But like, I feel like it's very hard to say if you don't like something. We just met her, so we didn't know like how she was feeling. And I remember like Joe just sat at the keyboard and just got these chords and it was just like, dun, 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 dun. and then Casper with the bass, like boom, 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 boom. And I was like, oh shit, like this is cold. And I remember like thinking, no, like writers aren't shit. Like producers are really like where a lot of the beauty comes from as well because it was just like it was their art, it was their inspiration. And then she was like, yeah, I got something. I'd written something like half an hour later, and she just came through with the first verse, and it was like, what? Like <laughs> I can see the colour of your eye in the reflection of the sky. I need a second in a mile high love. I've been pushing buttons because the feelings that I'm missing need a beat, and I might have something to fit these clubs. I think I'm calm and collected, hard and respected, pride is neglected. Fuck you and your gentrification! I remember like, when I spat the first couple of times, they just got gassed, which obviously gasses you as well. Gloves, I think, uh... The thing about Pryor, he, he doesn't just leave the beat, he will constantly work until it gets to the stand. It might mean nothing to anyone else, but there's a section at the end of the verse where it goes, tell and crank them up and let them play this. And there's a little drum roll there. Tell and crank them up and let them play this. When he sent it to me and I was just playing it, I literally lost my shit. Like, it just felt like... It felt like a puzzle had been completed, then it, yeah, that's how same old was born. They talk about lady life, but being a woman's a crime in places. We've been giving you many faces. What's up and getting this paid for chase it, and then the glory is getting gone. Pass me the stage and the lighter. Ooh. I'm ready for war, not ready my soul, but tell me what the fuck we're fighting for. Mm. The the cause, I'm down on the cause, I'm ready to play the. I want was the first session that Pyra and I had independently. She sent me a reference and it was like a Kate Trinardry kind of vibe. And so I came home and I started making this beat. That was the start of I want. I finally made some time for me. I'm happy, I'm calm, I'm jiggy, I'm sweet. Any would kind of send ideas or I'd send ideas to any and then we'd link up and kind of work on it together and then just bring different people in. So sometimes it would just be me and her, sometimes we'd have Joe and Casper here. Like there was no one way of working, I guess. Like that song was just, it was literally like done and dusted like off the path. 2019 was just this building year. Like I remember it just felt like we were preparing for something, we were shooting freestyles, we were doing press shots. It was just like building and building. I'd been in rooms that I'd never expected to be in. I was having all these like little small full circle moments, like pulling up to central London at a similar time that I would go to work, but I'm going to do something for music and it just felt gassy. So January started, I had some press shots. We were like building up to the first release, which was actually He's Not Into You because I'd recorded it, but it wasn't released. First track, obviously we'd ever heard from any first finished, fully finished track. Put some finishing touches on it to make it like a truly acceptable release. Production wise, like it had all kind of been done. It was a YouTube beat. And so I guess from for us, the team, it was more just like the artwork, the visuals, the campaign, doing the press, the radio, pulling a team together. Obviously it was the first time we'd all worked together on something like this before on a project, on a release. In February, we shot the music video for it that I should put together. Video shoot was a real fun experience, I think, because it was our first kind of proper visual project. We're all proud of those, those releases because I think we were all doing it by ourselves. You know what I mean? We didn't have no help, like all the money was en money from our pockets. Eyes for another girl, pines for another girl, wine and dines and books flights. That 500 pounds leaving my account for that music video, I was like, yeah. Which is jokes now, because the music video budgets we have now. But... <laughs> I think that's the, the sick thing about working in, on a project like, like this, is you end up doing all of the different things possible and it kind of opens the doors to so many different uh, journeys you can go down. We had to make every single thing happen ourselves. We'd taken that first release so seriously. We had it all ready. All, I swear it was even uploaded. I think it might have even been ready to go. And then like this little weird news item on, on the BBC that had been floating around for a few weeks. Next thing you know, it's like, yeah, we're going into lockdown. <laughs> I remember stressing, any, what are we gonna do? We're we gonna release, we're we not gonna release. Fuck, like we just put in like almost a year's work already. Like, what do we do now? I remember like Asha calling me and being like, Do you wanna go ahead 
with the release. It never even crossed my mind not to, because I was like, fam, like, I almost quit my job like 10 months ago now, like, this is it. Crack on, man. What do you mean? Like, we've been working on this for, for time. Like, of course we're going to crack on. Just because the world has stopped doesn't mean everything else has to stop with it. And what a good decision that was in the end. But now we pop champagne in celebration. I'm drugged up on the elation. I got tired of being patient. I saw truth and had to face it. I knew then that I could make it out. There was like murmurings of like labels reaching out and you were going for meetings in different places and Pastor was calling me all the time that like, this person reached out, that person reached out, like mad exciting. And then fam came involved. And yeah, we just got chatting and we met them, and he met them, we went out for lunch with them and kind of thought, yeah, this is, this is a good home, this is a good place for us to kind of carry on with Annie and she was obviously a fan of what they'd done before. Fucking you know, like, there's this like independent label who like released banging music and the guys seem really cool and they're, they're like into the music, they saw he's not into you, they've heard Peng Black Girls and a couple of the other demos, they're, they're gassed. This minute, like, oh. This label's heard Pink Black Girls and they want to um, sign it. All through summer, we were just planning how to release Pink Black Girls. Even before we were kind of talking to the fam, we knew that was going to be the next track. Like, it just kind of felt like the right thing. Everyone in the team thought so. We did the artwork in August. We had like treatments coming in for the video. We'd encountered an issue with the instrumental. We were trying to clear the sample and work out how to do that. And it was taking long, like I'm saying months. I think it ended up taking like six months in the end or something like that. I remember at one point just being like, you know what, nah, fuck it. We're just going to make another version. So in the meantime, I remember Pass sent me like 40 different versions of what could be the remix that he was working on with Shrig. I remember I belled my good friend Shrig, Shigala, shout out. I was like, yo, like I've got this um, a cappella from Any, I've got these drums, like, should we try and work on something? <laughs> In the crib <laughs> with the master, Sensei Shrig. So he started uh, working on it at like 10 p.m. and I feel like I got messages throughout the night from Shrig and the last one must have been at like six in the morning being like, I've tried about like 50 samples or something. I'll shout you in the morning, we can go through them all. So we listened to all 50 on a Zoom chat and just picked out the one that ended up being. That's I was like, yeah, I'm gonna get um, Casper to drop some bass on it. And I was like, cool. Yeah, I've gotten the message back and I'm listening to it. And I was like, oh, like, I remember looking at the messages back and just thinking, fuck, like, this sounds crazy, like this is mad. So there was this other vibesy, jazzy version. That's how the remix was born. And then there was a conversation about what feature to get on that, and there were loads of different names knocking around. George's manager just hitting me up, being like, yo, can, can I get the instrumental for, for Peng Black Girls, the remix? And I was like, yeah, sure, that. Like, why? And, and he's like, oh yeah, Georgia just wants to try something. She did the hook, because it was like a remix, and so it was like, okay, no. She read that song, she loved to get on the hook, but she also did the verse. She played it in the studio, and the person I thought, right, oh, she's really rapping, really she's coming with bars, like, this is sick. These black girls need to be in the shows, be on the runways, not just move boards. On top of that, I want to see when your team look at your crown. For paying black girls, it felt like, it started to feel like something bigger than me because there was a lot happening during the pandemic as well in regards to race and there had been a lot of topics and I think it was, the world was at a point where everyone had really had to sit down and analyse who we were as like a world and as, as a society. But it really seemed to strike with a lot of people and just resonate in a way that I never would have expected because I just was showing my reality. So it wasn't anything crazy for me to see because it's something I've grown up seeing. And so to just see like, not only just like people in the UK but people globally connect to a song and connect to a visual and see themselves represented like that was was very, very mad. And it made me sad because it made me realise a lot of black girls go through feelings the same way I felt when I was younger too, and not liking my features and wanting to be lighter and wanting to change certain things about themselves. And it, that shouldn't be like a coming of age story for, for black girls. I shouldn't have to feel this way because society's made me feel this way. Just seeing like different black girls, like it's just beautiful, the fact that we, we all come in different shapes, different sizes, different shades, and we're all beautiful. The more I thought about it, I'm like, wow, like I've got a single that's signed 
And now in the middle of a pandemic, I'm being flown out to Germany to do a colours. But by the time the original came out, we had all of that in the bag already. The music video started doing bits, everyone was gassed and I was like, ooh, they didn't even know what's coming. I was like, what? Like, shit, then. This is exciting. Like, I've seen colours and I know it's sick, but it just never crossed my mind, like, oh, I would do a colours or, like, I need to do a colours. It was so when, like, suddenly all these opportunities and all these, like, things started to come, it was just, it was just... It was mind-boggling. Maybe a month later, in December, the remix came out and that's when it just went mad. Colours dropped and everything changes. Everything changes, like, it's simple. That shit just took off differently. I remember they dropped it and looking at Enya's followers. First it was 40, then it was 50. Every time I'm refreshing, it's going up by thousands kind of thing. I'm like, what? I mean, it took a long time for the dust to settle on Pen Black Girls. I don't think it really has even now. She literally went from, like, no one knowing her to everyone talking about her in the industry. The transition from making Pink Black Girls and then like that whole hype and everything surrounding it and then calming down and then suddenly there's just a mass of opportunities. After that, everything had to be 10-10. We couldn't mess up. We kind of then realised like the scale of the task ahead and we wanted everything to be at the top level because we knew it had to be now. We were then operating at the top level. Our, our lives had changed, that's how I felt. More eyes, more pressure, more everything like she handled it, how, how she handles it all the time when she's in, under pressure, which is smashing it, you know what I mean? I've gone from this transitional, not a trans... Well, yeah, this transitional phase of feeling like I wasn't deserving of a lot of things to kind of just taking everything in its stride because you only ever get one moment to have these first moments. It's also taught me to value who I am as a person, know what I bring to the table, not feel so indebted. It's still not the all end and be all. Like, these opportunities are sick, but it doesn't define the music and it doesn't find, define the messages. And without them, I'm still going to be any, and with it, I'm still any. And so I don't think you can let this stuff kind of take away the purpose of why you're doing what you're doing. Malibu is one of, like, my favourite songs on the project because that was, like, the last song that I made when I was 25. And so I feel like it is a kind of, like, a full circle moment. I wrote the verse and then I always knew that I didn't have, like, a second verse for it. I felt like I'd said everything I needed to say. And just even just from hearing the production, I just was like, nah, I can hear King Kai on this. Is, like, this is, like, the feature I definitely need on this. The minute it was kind of sent to me, I kind of knew what I wanted to say immediately. The rest just followed. Like, the, the beat is, like, it gives you so much momentum. And I think it just allowed me to carry on. I just remember Pascal not being a fan of this this tune. He was like, I'm not really here for it. And so I remember that the day I said, no, nah, let's go on the EP. Like, I remember in the studio, his eyes were a bit like, fun. I don't think he was like that much of a fan of the beat until he heard like the final product and it gradually got bigger and better. And then I think it's like one of his favorites now. And I think that's just testament to like, just seeing seeing it through in it. Everyone adding like their little two pence just made the song even more beautiful than we could have like imagined and then getting some background vocals and it just it just became like this such this a track that just felt like it was just gonna be like a couple bars just kind of turned into something so beautiful and musical and like I think it also just shows the growth. Like my growth as an artist and just how we hear music and Pius production and him sticking through it even though he didn't like it for it to become like one of his favourite songs on the project. Just Malibu just feels like the coming of age moment on the track, where it's like you've had same old, which is the vibey I want, going after what you want. And then Malibu is like this transition into like realization and really thinking. And I think it just follows the narrative of like under 25. I wrote Keys and Murders around the time that everything with like Harvey Weinstein had started popping off and there'd been like just a lot of conversations about just consent and how women are treated and just even things I'd learnt growing up and things I'd seen. I know some Keisha's and Brenda's done by some family or friends, bruv. Done by your person they trusted. We got the knife and the gun clip. The song is called Keisha's and Brenda's in respect to um, Keisha from Kendrick Lamar's Keisha song and Brenda from Tupac's Brenda's Got a Baby. Because I, I've always found it weird how, not in a rude way of course, but how like men can touch on subjects that are so like intricate to women and a, a woman like having a child at 16. This, is it really a story for a guy to tell? I 
I think the video was just as impactful as the song. Coming up with foolishness, like, what was she doing there? Why did you follow them there? Why was you wearing that? Why did you say? But I didn't want it to be preachy, and I didn't want it to be corny. I just wanted it to be wanted it to be what it meant. It's a real strong way to end a sick release, a sick rollout for Emmy and for the team. I think this last video is a, is a really special, important video. Just make time for a video like the video that we're about to drop because it's important, I think, that people engage at least with it. The final song for the EP is Under 25. That's the song that kind of sparked the, the concept behind the EP. And I remember like writing it during a period that I was scared about not having everything together by 25, like just like shit in my pants. I promise you, it's not that funny. It's not here, she said it's not chicken and that. She's so annoying. Oh Bro, my I was God. holding your face, you stop. You would have said tell I want to eat. No more chicken and that. You had four chickens. I think it's just like the most honest song I wrote at that time. I feel like I could resonate with it a lot. I think everyone that, that I know of anyway, that I've spoken to, literally felt like life was supposed to be put together by 25. I'm 28 and I feel like for me, the under 25 thing is the 30 thing. That pressure of like society just demanding things of you and you, you don't know if you can deliver it. It's just unhealthy and it's unrealistic and it's mentally not okay to put these pressures on young people because it's they're unrealistic. I feel like a lot of the content is what people are either thinking or what they've said to themselves before. The, the concept of the EP is me accepting, first of all, accepting that I don't have it all together, that it's okay not to have it all together. At the end of the day, like, life is just one whole lesson. Like, you've got, hopefully, until I'm like 80, 90, to make as many mistakes and try new things, but there shouldn't be like a, a time cap on when you do it. Listening to the song now, because it was started at a place where it was just like, am I gonna have it together by 25? And I'm like 26 and I don't have it together, but things are, are, are kind of calm at the moment. And things are looking up and I'm doing what I wanted to do. I feel like where I was when I first met any and where we are now, I've learned a lot of different things, technical things to even more like personal things, personal growth and understanding other people. So it's been a, an amazing journey. The experience of the first release was, I think, humbling and just made me really appreciative to have a network of people that would that were supporting me. Just watching the music connect and watching it travel and watching people kind of relate to the message. The EP also was just like a defining moment of the era that we're living in where people are chasing dreams. People are not going to the United States, people are starting their own businesses, doing what they want. We're in a different world that our parents were in and it's kind of a more self-serving place, which I think is healthy. This is your life, this is your one time here and you've got to kind of just do what you want because there's not a second chance to do it, and if you miss it, that's it. Any has is one of the few artists um, working right now that has a message that genuinely needs to be spread and heard. And I think for me, that was what attracted me so much because it chimes with my belief of music that it can have like a real, it can be a force for change. All I wish for the future is for that message to, to continue to be spread. I want her to go wherever she wants to go wherever that is. Having that basis of just believing in what you do and following your desire to make what you want is just what it's all about. And I think she's got that in heaps. I played a very small role in it, I feel like, in terms of like the amount of time and energy that got put into that project is just insane. Just so inspiring, just so inspiring, man. Just seeing her journey from like when we were in school to now is just, it's, it's incredible. And like I was even saying to someone earlier that I genuinely wish you lot could have seen her. Like she's always had this talent. So it's not even a surprise. It's not even a, oh my gosh, she's her. It's more the fact that she's so, so deserving of all of this. The concept of the EP and what it means hasn't changed. I think now more so than ever, it just feels the same. And it feels like once it kind of comes out, there'll be the end of a chapter. The significance of the project is just what it is. It's a, it's a whole 
period of time, it's experiences, it's a moment. It's so beautiful to see our friend win, because she's, she's not just doing it for herself, she's doing it for us, she's doing it for South London, she's doing it for black girls. Um, so yeah, big up any. The energy and the intention and the place that the songs were made from, I think are bigger than what I could have imagined. And so I hope that that has translated when people listen to it. It's gonna be a long time before I have another story to tell that is as prominent as and impactful to me as under 25. <laughs> 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 <laugh